Welcome to Downtown Variety, presented by La Mama and Culture Hub. I'm your host, Maddie Barbara Bockelman. And for the first time hosting Downtown Variety, I'm not in Brooklyn, New York, but I am in Amherst, Massachusetts with my parents. Beautiful scenery here, as you can see. This is Downtown Variety. And if you've been here before, you know it's La Mama and Culture Hub's ongoing experiment where we work with artists to uncover and discover the theatricality and storytelling possibilities of this emerging medium. At the beginning of the pandemic, we were producing the show weekly, which was a whirlwind and a dream and an unprecedented learning experience, if you will. Now we're producing this show monthly and to launch the upcoming La Mama and Culture Hub seasons, we will produce a special edition of Downtown Variety. Every edition is special, and this one will be no different, but it will be entirely different. This will be on September 18th. You heard it here first, or you read it on Playbill already, but this will be the season that approaches new, new ways of creating art. It's dubbed the Breaking It Open season by La Mama, and, um, yeah, it's a whole new model that they've never done in its 59 years of existence. I keep on remembering that this is a historic moment and I wouldn't want to experience it alone. I'm so lucky to be here and to have you here with me. We're gonna go places tonight. First, we will travel to Nairobi, Kenya. Then it's off to the River Thames in London then to Berlin, Germany for a little late night action, and then to the Okanichu homelands, also known as Orange County, North Carolina, and then to sunny Los Angeles where it's uh, 100 degrees, I've heard. And finally, we'll return home to a tiny closet in New York City. Sounds like the first apartment that I rented when we moved to Brooklyn. Uh, it's too good, and I just have to say, this whole this is the whole reason that Culture Hub was founded by La Mama and the Soul Institute of the Arts in 2009 to explore how the internet and emerging technologies could foster artistic collaboration and international and cultural exchange. The future is now. So thank you. First, we go to Nairobi, Kenya, where our friends at Bold Theater Company are standing by live and it's about three in the morning right now. So without further ado, Oroji Otieno. <laughs> Dala, 
wachigi maneno kure dala aboro natutera dia made komo dia made komo kure dala natutera dia made komo dia made komo kure dala aboro natutera dia made chai Dia ma de chai pure dala nanu tera dia ma de chai dia ma de chai pure dala aboro Do you have the live stream playing? I just want to make sure I don't hear feedback. You mean me? Oh no, you sound great. Hi. Hi. And hey. hello. So this is Oroji. Oroji, can you introduce your incredible team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is DJ Bruno Versatile. Hi, DJ Bruno Versatile. Yeah, he was playing the African Shakers. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, my brother is at the background. Yeah, <laughs> he's on the camera. Habat Habat Odera. And my name is Aroji Otieno. I was playing the Nyatiti. This is uh, the lyre. It's an eight-string instrument. Yeah, I was wondering because I realized I had never I had never asked what this instrument was called and and how it's built. Yeah, so uh, this instrument, uh, as I said, it's called the Nyatiti. The Nyatiti. Uh, it's, um, it's actually one of the oldest uh, tools or equipment that we have. Uh, my tribe is called the Luo. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the Luo tribe. Mm -hmm. And we come from the northern part of Sudan, so southern Egypt. 
and we traveled with this instrument along the Nile. So it carries a lot of our history. It carries a lot of our stories. It's an eight-string instrument. The reason why this, um, I feel like this, this instrument is important to me because it's the nucleus of, um, of um, African music. It's the nucleus of our music in our tribe. And um, mm. my art is about the combination of um, the now and the then. So this instrument represents, you know, our, our source. This is our resource. And we take our resource and we use that inspiration to make the kind of work that you've seen um, in the screen. Yes, and that's the work of Bold Theatre Company, right? Yes, that's the work of Bold Theatre Company. Uh, this particular work, we collaborated uh, by a wonderful, wonderful lady called Paula Irun, who I met at a wonderful, wonderful place that was Umbria, uh, invited by La Mama. So, mm -hmm. you know, since then, it was like a dream come true. You know, I met a lot of, you know, really interesting people. And um, so what happened is the same way during the uh, during the when the COVID COVID nineteen thing happened, we had a project that we were already showcasing or we were planning to showcase on stage, but we had to put it online so that it continued. Right. And so I reached out to Paula and asked that before and asked her to submit some work so that you know she could share some work because we had a, a platform called Bold Memoir, and Kenyans on this side really loved how she worked. And uh, most of them asked for a workshop. So I, I, I requested if Paula could do a workshop with a few artists. A lot of people, um, 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 what, what do you call it, uh, sub? <laughs> a lot of people, um, um, the word has gone. Whatever the word, yeah. but, uh, and then submitted, yes, thank you. Sub and then yeah, it was that simple. Yeah. And we got eight, <laughs> we got eight from Kenya. And also, we got eight participants from Paraguay. So this was the first time we were working with, the, with Paraguay. Most of us did not even know. Most of us only knew Paraguay from football. Right. And this was yeah. the first time we were working with artists, and they were just fabulous. Amazing. So what we is um, we are going to launch this maybe also in a week's time, and we'll see 16 pieces from the um, work. Yeah. So that'll be accessible to the World Wide Web? Yes, yes, please. It's going to be on our Facebook page and uh, and also maybe through Zoom as we are going to do, say, one last reunion and talk about the work. Ah, yeah. yeah. I can't wait. Such powerful images and and you have such incredible artwork in your home and incredible artists in your home, too. Thank it's you very much. To be connected with you. Thank you. Cool. Well, I can't wait to see what Bold Theatre Company does next, and I'll see it very soon, which is incredible that we get to see everything on on the internet like this. Yes. yes. Cool. Okay, next time, All I'll right, be bye. there in Nairobi. All right, thank you. Okay, Orogio Tieno and his incredible collaborators in both Kenya and Paraguay. All right, thank you, Bruno, thank you, Herbert. Cool, okay, so next, like I promised, we are going all the way to London, to the River Thames. And without further, it, oh no, did I just start to do an accent? That's terrible, that's just terrible. Um, okay, so we've got a long time La Mama collaborator, Great Jones Company, repertory company member, Peter Case. Dear little sister, you'll be happy to know I now have a fantastic view of the river you've always loved. In fact, other than being in the water, or indeed submerged within it, the view from my place of residence could not be better. I feel safe here most times. The sounds of the city slowly sighing its final breaths is diminished here especially if I stay under the bridge. It is good to be under the bridge, because I cannot see or be seen by the passing traffic. The stones above me were placed by hands long before all of the hands became contaminated, long before the hands became a number to keep us apart. 
That was when thoughts were clean and the mind was not infested with the pestilence. When Culpepper said the disease was not catching and did not move from person to person or house to house. Do you remember that before time? I asked you that once. If you remembered that when, then you said, What? Since the vermin and the disease spread throughout the city, fell in commoner and king alike? And what little system of social welfare was in place was washed away with the many bodies floating in the river and the fires broke out? And the kind people became criminals and the criminals became murderers and the murderers took the opportunity to take advantage of the kind people before eating them while the food ran out and homes became graveyards. And graveyards became the pit and the pit is burning like the river which became the graveyard, the home and the pit and serves us our dinners riding rats on the bodies floating downstream. And when our friends died and our families died and the really rich people ran away and died and died and the impoverished stayed put and died and when Holding became touching, and touching became breathing, and breathing became looking, and looking became longing, and longing became a long distance away to look, listen, touch, and feel. And the distance between us became sixteen palms, and sixteen palms it has stayed. And you came to our house and you told me, we must go away, because the vermin had to get a disease, and the disease had to get hatred, and hatred had taken up arms, and the wars would be small before they became big. The when, when you said you only wanted to look after ourselves, that you only wanted to look after me, and you said we should maybe get in a boat, and float the boat out to sea, and drift off onto the unpolished horizon. That when? Is that the when you mean? I said yes, and you said no, that you had no memory of the when before. You said that all you could see was mother's face desiccated and half eaten by rats, and father's skull chewed clean, but whose gelatinous eyes still cried. You went to get water to wash our family clean. You came down to the river, but you never came back. So I am on the river that you loved, my dear sister. Eating the rats, riding rafts of corpses as they float downstream. I am near our house, and these are the rats that ate our father, and ate our mother, and now I eat them. You left me with their faces, which I keep with me in my isolation, but I do not have your face, my dear sister. I will keep paddling to stay under the bridge, to keep away from the shore. I will paddle while I eat, and I will paddle as I sleep. I will keep paddling until the world is dust, along with my memories. Much love, your big brother. Peter fucking case. Holy shit. <laughs> Peter. Hello, hello. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Fantastic. Hey, Maddie. Hey. Hi. How you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. It's, um, uh, it's only raining a little bit. Oh, <laughs> I don't even notice. Somehow the the rain isn't hasn't made its way into the live stream. We should uh, crank it up a little bit. Create some more traffic. <laughs> Peter, how did you how did you how did you make? I guess my uh, main question is, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? And how did you do this? Well, it's a good question. Uh, I think it kind of came about for several, several on several different sort of in several different layers. Maybe like the the, the text, and um, I wanted to delve into isolation, this idea of isolation, and uh, and obviously the experience of what we're all going through. And uh, a boat in the Thames seemed like um, a good. And very interesting metaphor, if not a very literal literal one, in terms of isolation when you're in a big city. Um, and then I guess also just I want to experiment with working with these different places that one could produce, could make work. Um, 
finding unique sites and um, just exploring those possibilities, really. And it's been very difficult not to be able to do the work and to have the work stopped, you know, because of all this. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've just been thinking about all the the opportunities of distance, not no longer it's it's I mean, it's a backwards way to think of it as an opportunity, but you're a longtime Great Jones Repertory Company member and you've been in London and now we're here making work together and I think that that That's can continue. <laughs> um, what did you say? Say that again? Sorry. Sorry, your paddling got in the way. Oh, that, that, yeah, that always yeah, happens in that kind of variety. Don't worry, I'm used to it. Um, but yeah, the opportunity of distance and that you can do, you can collaborate with um, this company you've worked with so for so long and and with La Mama. Yeah, it's made my, um, it's made my, it's made you know, it's made the isolation so much more tolerable. Really, just to be able to connect with the great Jones Webb, Rep and La Mama, you know, again. Uh, in this way, it's meant a lot, a huge amount to me. Actually, it's really, I really have felt very far away for quite a long time. So it was great. And just to reiterate here, you are literally on the River Thames, how we say it, which I googled. Yeah. In a canoe. In a canoe. With yep. a computer and a camera. And a camera. At two in the morning. Right, and revelers occasionally walking along the riverbank. Uh, are people going out in London? Like, are, is there people out? Yeah, yeah, there's people out. People out right now. Um, I guess it's a bit slow for a. It's a bit quiet for a Friday, but um, that's to be expected. I would say. Um, I was getting heckled a little bit ago, which was, which was nice to, you know, it was nice to see. At least Sports. they were. That's what we need. Sporting. Um, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Peter. Well, thank you very much, Maddie. It's, it's a privilege. First and, performance uh, from from the water. You can um, take that accolade home with you and uh, put it on your mantle. I will. I will yeah. wear it on my neck. <laughs> okay. See you soon. Thank okay. you very much. I'm going to paddle home. <laughs> on you go. On you go. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. All right. Hard to fully comprehend. I know. Yeah, and he also had mud all over him. So I just, yeah. And he'd also burned his jeans. So I just, there's a lot of things going on here. Anyway, now we're going to go to another home in London by way of Split Bridges. Um, Split Bridges is a, is a performance duo and many other things duo of Peggy. and Lois Weaver, and they found themselves in lockdown in London um, in this two-story house. And they will be one of the resident artists of La Mama's upcoming 59th season. And we're gonna show this video work that is uh, that they've, they've given to us for the evening to kick off the, the work that they will continue to develop throughout the whole next year, which we're so excited to. So um, Peggy Shaw is the first video artist showing paintings. Here we go. Hello, here I am in isolation in London, having a very good time in my backyard and painting all the time. I just wanted to share with some of you my mask paintings because to me the mask is the symbol of all unity right now where we're all in this together and we respect each other. Enough to wear a mask if you're sick and wear a mask if you don't want to get sick. So. Here are my mask paintings. Music from Vivian Stowe with the paintings. She is working with us on our new show, The Last Gasp. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
All right. So, um, Peggy Shaw, we'll see more from Lois Weaver in a little bit. But now, um, again, as I promised, we are going to Berlin, Germany, and Los Angeles. This is a collaborative duo, well, really trio. Um, you'll see. This is Lisa Müller Trede, Chris Limbach, and Michael Ferreira.
All right. All right. Lisa and Chris, I have you here. Here they are. Well, up. Well, up. But I think the truth is that we had a little problem with the sound. Oh, really? I know, but can we hear you? Do you, you hear me you? now? I hear you just fine, and I've heard the sound the whole time, but it, we're having, I just want to make sure it's going through to the live stream. So this has been our summertime curse. <laughs> but now we're here, so. Hello, here's Lisa and here's Chris. So, look, I don't know exactly what everybody got. I mean, I got it all. I got it all straight to the heart. And now I see Lisa covered in paint and wind flow, hair flowing in the wind and Chris's hair uh, sweated on his forehead. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's up? So, What's this collaboration like? What, Chris is in Berlin, Lisa's in Los Angeles, and um, you guys have been working together. Yeah, it's actually been maybe even easier now, right? Like, because mm -hmm. I've been here for a while, and before that, we were obviously like physically together, but now that the virus, we've been doing quite a bit of stuff um, because everyone's doing it this way now. We feel all, except for that it's a bit late over there, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely bad time already. And um, yeah, and we did collaborations a lot before and um, yeah, we just kept doing it kind of and adapted it to, to the s s streaming thing, I guess. Yeah. Oh. So um, this video, this, this what, what we just saw, can you tell me a little bit about what we saw and how you how you've made it yeah we, i mean we throw the camera back and forth uh, mm -hmm. and then chris doesn't catch it most of the time he just doesn't so we start <laughs> throwing it to him uh, <laughs> yeah. he's unfortunately not here right now with me. Yeah, yeah he really is not so great at the game called camera catch exactly <laughs> and michael's not good at being in front of it so you know he got <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's uh, it, there's it's just us in in this space, and then we um, we kind of give um, it back and forth. Hmm. And what's it? And I, so some of our live stream viewers might not have heard all of the the live scoring that Chris was doing. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about the live scoring that you do, and maybe show a little bit, just what you because hmm. I mean, we saw it, but but what what each thing yeah. does. No, usually, yeah, what we do is is we try to treat sound and video kind of the same way, right? Like um, thinking at an expanded cinema situation and having a video and doing live scoring to it. I, I just have a lot of machines here I use for, for sound generation. So I would like the maybe the most funny thing is this. The milk know, frother. The famous milk frother. Yeah, what you do that you use for making cappuccinos or something. So I can, I would use that for example. So good. Or I have a, a lot of tape machines, some synths and, but mostly working with feedbacks and, um, and electromagnetic waves I just pick up from the equipment itself. So it, it generates an own loop of sound that then interacts with the video. Incredible. And Lisa, your background is video art somewhat and a little bit too? Yeah, I, I guess like uh, I, um, I, I'm, I'm a performer, but then I integrate media uh, mm -hmm. a lot because I, I, yeah, it's, it's kind of um, a nice way of getting, now it's quite nice to get into the frame, but usually, you know, to get out of that frame that the, the performative realm kind of sets you. And so I like going back and forth, usually maybe in like a performative exhibition. So I guess it's mostly what I do. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You got a little, uh, little painty, you got a little something, a uh, little something there in your. Yeah. I took it out of Michael and then I, I got sweaty. So it's kind um, of 
on my hands and then like do I do that a lot. Yeah. yeah. As we all do. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's the best best way. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I got I got a lot of ice here, so I didn't get catch didn't catch the blue. So I, I bought like two kilos of ice to cool down my computers and everything. So the paint didn't stuck with me. It just threw off. Totally just iced out of you. Makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It makes it so much better with that ice. It, well done. Yeah, yeah, it's much better. The computers <laughs> love love the ice, huh? Cool. Well, I'm glad nobody was harmed in the making of this. I mean, I hope, but we don't know where not evil is. is so, <laughs> Jesus, let's <laughs> just <laughs> hope. <laughs> I'm not. No All right. Well, back to your respective time zones, please. And enjoy the rest of your um, late night in Berlin, Chris, and your early evening in Los Angeles. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. So we were that thus concludes the international portion of the evening. Um, we were in Nairobi, Kenya, London, England, and just Berlin, Germany, which is very exciting. Um, we are now uh, shipping back stateside uh, where we'll have s some more performances. And um, in the interim, I might take this moment to uh, discuss my appearance, my uh, lovely new earrings, which if you've been following downtown variety have been a minor motif, a minor character, if you will. These are done by Verna Estes, who is my longest best friend in the world. Um, and oddly enough, this shirt is also from Verna and, uh, and my friend Zoe, who got it from this little store. I don't know if you might have heard of it, uh, in Berlin. They were actually in, in Germany. Yeah, it's called Zara. I don't know if you've heard of it. Just this little boutique they came across in Germany. So, um, here we are. And, and why don't I also take this opportunity Now, to be um, transparent, we are getting our next performer in who has a multi-camera setup, which we're trying to work out right now. We've got one camera in and we're waiting for the next. Um, how you doing? Good? Kind of reminds me of the uh, Pixar lamp. So we've been doing Downtown Variety for since March 20th of 2020, and we're gonna keep going for as long as we need to, and it'll change if we need it to too. But I just wanted to take this moment also to say that um, if you have the possibility to donate, it would be deeply appreciated because um, we're just finding ways to serve Yeah, I think we should. Yeah, so now we're gonna um, actually go to a a video, the second in the series from Split Britches. And um, this is the next work, which is from Lois Weaver, an incredible performer.
Maura Garcia. Wow. I mean, worth the wait. That's what I would say, worth the wait. Hello there, Maura. Would you? Yes. yes. How? Man, that got me grooving. The music, I mean, the dance and the music was so good. Original music, right? Yes, original music by Mark Gabriel Little. So, so amazing. And is that a collaboration that you go to often? Yes, it's actually my brother. Oh, <laughs> so, that makes it so much better. Yes, it does make it better, but um, we didn't always work together. We probably started maybe our first, I think I want to say our first kind of largest project was about five years ago. So, Five years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow. The family connections run deep in this piece. Yes. Yes. So. So what's, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to create this piece and, and where it's coming from? Yeah. Um, so I have a, another piece called They Are Still Talking or mm -hmm. Si Um and actually, I didn't even introduce myself. Uh, I'm Mora Nuidai Telegi Gahti, Long Hair Clan, Cherokee, and Madame Mesquite. Um, but yeah, uh, so it was, a, it was a part of a larger piece, which was about our connections to our ancestors through breath, our connections by gesture, um, our connections through trauma, our connections through joy. And then I started thinking about, those were more like about the long ago ancestors, mm -hmm. uh, maybe ancestors from 10,000 years ago that we mm -hmm. never even met, um, but they prayed for us. And, uh, but then I started thinking about the closer ancestors, the people that I had, that had taught me, that I had grown up around, that I had lived around and, um, and what their teachings were and what their actions were. So the idea was to make a little base choreography off specific things from those people. Yeah, so um, one of the pieces where I, I'm lifting up my legs and I'm falling over it, I had my cousin, uh, Mitty, my, call it my grandma cousin, she's like grandma. Um, right. She had broken her leg when she was younger and never they didn't have any money and so it it didn't heal right yeah uh -huh. so it was completely straight all the time so you know when she had to get out of a chair she had to do this weird thing where she threw her leg straight and you know like, hoisted herself up out of the chair it was really amazing to watch her do this yeah and she you know she didn't even even when she um had other mobility problems she didn't want help with that she said no because if uh if i get help now then i won't be able to do it later right so, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where the idea for the for the piece came from. It's from either movements or teachings uh, from different people. And that's so, such a close way to meet a person through that gesture. Like that's so informative and mm -hmm. and personal and everyday and casual, but full. And and you have those those numbers that you did with your hands. Yes. What's the what's the significance of those numbers yeah and before i forget i want to yeah. just say on ig live i'm going to be talking with the composer my brother oh. at, at 10 o'clock eastern time so we'll be going tonight out. yeah tonight after so the that's show. the after party yeah that's the after party Perfect. Um, but the numbers uh, four and seven um are very important to a lot of native people to us as the cherokee people uh, to a lot of Native people in general. And so that's why they're in there, but particularly one of the the ancestors, um, who for me, he's my ancestor because he taught me, mm -hmm. uh, he's not my blood ancestor, was uh, Andy Gertie, uh, Josai Jigesa. And he, you know, he was one of those teachers that always, because um, he was a, also a professor, his you know, teacher at Haskell Indian Nations University in Lawrence, Kansas, and uh, he would repeat himself sometimes. So you know, you know how teachers will always 
repeat himself. And when he was just talking, he could be talking about anything, but a lot of times he'd come back to four and, you know, he'd say, well, you know, four and seven, those are very sacred numbers to Indian people. And he would go on and tell some other story. So that's in his honor, just remembering uh, Mr. Mr. Gertie, you know, the four and the seven. So. And I love that too, because um, one of La Mama's buildings, well, really two, but so La Mama has 47 Great Jones Street mm. and oh. 74 East 4th Street. Oh, wow. So we got the, the fours and the sevens going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Maura, so good to meet you through your ancestors and through this amazing performance, which I hear was the first you've done live in quarantine. Yeah, um, my last performance was at Caldera Arts in Oregon, Sisters Oregon. It was, um, I had just finished a residency and it was the residency showing. Mm. And it was a huge, beautiful space with beautiful wood floor and open window with the, you know, the woods and mountains. And you know all these people showed up from all over, and so it was a it was a full audience. There were people standing in the back, so that was my last time performing. It was about two weeks before shutdown. You know, I'm glad it was. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and and so this, you know, you you can, you all can't see, but I have literally everything in this room pushed to one side, and you know I've I've made this stage here as I'm sure everyone else has been doing with their spaces. Yeah. Um, so it's it's very different, but I'm just as happy to be doing it because uh, it's nice to do something. It was nice to do something live. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we should all share our our behind the scenes setups, like the photo of the non stage that makes the stage possible. I don't know if I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a reason it's not on stage. <laughs> cool, Maura, you're amazing. Thank you so Thank much. You. I'm so glad that we got to work together tonight. Yeah. Tonight. Yes. Cool. Thank See you, you all for the work. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. All right. There's the incredible Mora. And next, we've got Shauna Davis, who is going to be um, a resident artist in, in La Mama's upcoming season, which is in very special and incredible and exciting. And um, we had her on last Downtown Variety. So this work that you're about to see tonight is a continuation uh, of that work. So without further ado, this is Shauna Davis. Okay, show me a white doll. Show me a colored doll. Show me a good doll. Show me a bad doll. A smart doll. Show me the dumb doll. Show me the prettier doll. Why? Show me the nigger. How about the hardest working doll? Which do you think is most lonely? Which doll is easiest to find in stores? Who has a clear path to success? Which was raised with an absent father? Who is more likely to season their food? Which was taught to work twice as hard? And who learned that it's actually three times as hard? Who is a product of their environment? Who is facing daily racialized trauma? Who is believed in by their society? Which has more educational opportunities? And who lives in a food desert? 
which is exposed to more air pollution? Show me the doll that's bilingual <laughs> in Ebonics. Which doll is most likely to not find their skin tone in the makeup aisle? Who is more likely to still be in jail for a nonviolent marijuana charge? Which one wrote your textbooks? And which has an entire continent descending from royalty? Show me the doll that looks most like Michael Jackson. Show me the doll that has set music trends since the beginning of time. Show me the doll whose grandma has a plastic couch covering that squeaks every time you sit. Which doll has resilience in their bloodline? Which doll communicates safety and camaraderie with a single nod? Which is most like you? Which is most like you? Which is most like you? Shauna Davis. Here she comes, Miss Shauna Davis. Hey there. I need you to unmute thyself. I guess I meant it when I said sunny Los Angeles. Very sunny Los Angeles. <laughs> oh my gosh. And very hot, I hear. Yeah, about 100 degrees, but. Damn. Loving it. Loving it. You're from Florida. I am. So she is no stranger to you. That's true. I escaped it for a little while. I prefer the heat rather than the cold. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Gotta hold it down in our respective quadrants of the whatever. <laughs> so Shauna, I first just, I'm so glad to have you back on the show. That's incredible. It's it's so great to continue working with you. And um, you're one of these people who's starting to really work from dance and from movement, but to explore what it's like to create in a new way uh, with this form. And like, you danced it, you created it, you conceptualized it, and did you do the audio editing? Is what's the, I, um, the script? Friend helped Tell me with everything. Audio. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm coming into this new place where I'm trying to use dance as a tool um, to tell a story outside of the like proscenium setting, mm -hmm. um, and for it to be something that I utilize um, and something supportive. And I've never really used or seen dance in that way. So um, actually in the making of this piece, the movement is what I struggled with the most. Mm -hmm. I had the idea, um, I was really fascinated by the doll tests of um, the 1950s, which helped um, Brown versus Board of, Cache, Board of Education and helped um, integrate schools. Um, so I was already really fascinated by that. Um, I had this idea that someone older should be reading it. So my mom read it and um, she actually went to segregated school. So it's kind of a nice tie in. She saw them integrate. Wow. Um, and yeah, um, I'm trying right now to find how my movement fits into these different settings. So I'm, I'm excited to be able to explore that both here and with the residency. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so this piece came from these doll tests. Yeah. Which, can you just tell me a little bit about those, those tests? Yeah, so um, they asked the standard questions that um, my audio began with, like, 
who's the prettier doll, who's the smarter doll, which one looks most like you. Um, and they ask a series of these questions to black children. Mm -hmm. Found that all of the positive traits, the black children would point to the white doll, would attribute these positive things for the white doll and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, and they determined that they had a, the kids had a low, um, very low self image and that they were emotionally and physically damaged. So it's kind of hard um, because this test is super flawed. Right. You don't want to just say this or that, white or black, that's not the world that I really want to live in. Um, but it is a reality and it was a reality. So I thought about how to imagine other questions and elicit a different response without giving the answers away. Yeah, and some of the questions I was like, ooh, good question. And some of them, I was, they, they're they just too spot on. <laughs> they're like, yeah. Any in particular? Well, okay, well, here I go. The Michael Jackson question, I was like, ooh, good question. And then the, um, I mean, obviously every question, but the the bilingual in Ebonics. And then the, um, I thought that one that one line that you wrote the about the nod mm -hmm. was so powerful too. Thank you. So, yeah, I, right? I tried to dig into my own, definitely, obviously, <laughs> my own experiences and what I'm proud of and things that upset me and hearing my mother read these things over. Um, elicits a, a certain emotional thing. Yeah. <laughs> me, so thank you. Thank Do you, Mama Shauna Davis. Yeah, she's here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she's here in the ether. She is. Great, Shauna. Thank you so much. You're a star. OK. So our last performance of the evening is coming at you very, very shortly. Um, that was the incredible Shauna Davis. And uh, next, we've got Joshua William Gelbs. We're gonna go behind the scenes real quick to prepare, if we can. I'm going to give you a little phrase um, and then we can talk about it. Hopefully you can sort of um, adapt it a little bit since I don't have a closet here with me. Down. And then bringing this leg through again. And actually when you're doing that, can you bring your arms around and then through? And then I want to try adding in just like a little bit of constant here, boom, boom. And then by the time, the final time, when you come around here, can you bring your feet um, on the diagonal and then looking at the camera? And then maybe we have you walk downstage 
but there's a draft of something that you can give a go. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Wow. Joshua William Gelb with Katie Rose McLaughlin, his collaborator, who is going to join us live and just has. So I see Josh and I see Katie Rose. Hi. Hey, Katie Rose. Hi. Hi. Oh, you did it. We've done it. How's the, how's the audio? Check, check. <laughs> There's always like some button that needs to be pressed before you can start talking. Or like five. Yeah. Audio in basically the bane of this entire project. <laughs> I like I like that as the um the less technical understanding of sound. There's always some button you need to press, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, wow. I mean, you all have been working since the beginning of this whole uh, lockdown and, and before that still, right? Can you tell us a little bit about your collaboration and how you've been working together? Sure. Katie Rose, do you want to start? <laughs> Um, Josh and I have been working together for uh, a little over 10 years, which is crazy because um, time is just flying. Um, so we've known each other and we've collaborated on a number of projects before. Um, I feel like, Josh, actually, you should talk about, so yes, we've been working basically on this project, Theater in Quarantine, since the beginning of um, the stay at home orders, mm. like basically sort of the middle of March. Um, Josh, you should talk a little bit about what, what you did. What compelled you to build a tiny white space out of a closet, maybe? Yeah, well, uh, first off, probably worth mentioning, I live alone. Uh, mm. I don't know if I would have done this if, if it had been otherwise. Right. So I uh, had a lot of time on my hands and a, a lot of solitude to deal with. Mm -hmm. And uh, very quickly I went through all of the like random odd job household projects I wanted to get done. And I started looking at this closet and very quickly realized it was the same aspect ratio as my iPhone and uh, started to imagine what it would be like to think of the closet as a, a new type of proscenium and uh, very quickly painted it and uh, cleaned it up and uh, brought in Katie Rose and a bunch of other collaborators. And we've yeah. all started uh, trying to explore what it means to, to make theater digitally in, in the closet, which <laughs> is much smaller uh, than it appears on the I screen. know, I was like, wow, that guy has a pretty big closet. <laughs> <laughs> but I realized it's not. Two True. feet, two, two feet. feet. Two feet deep, two feet deep. It's not that big. It's not that no. big, folks. Don't get <laughs> jealous. I got jealous. It's, don't get jealous. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's so amazing. I'm wondering how, how has this transformed you? Wow. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's been really rewarding being able to actually develop an artistic practice. Mm -hmm. I think theater artists in New York in particular uh, don't have that ability. Mm -hmm. uh, so have my own space uh, that I can work in and kind of, you know, be my own gatekeeper uh, is uh, really uh, beyond anything I could have uh, uh, dreamed would come of this. Right. So yeah. yeah. And then of course, the ability to work with these other artists who, I mean, otherwise, you know, to give them an outlet to be working has been really wonderful. Right. I feel like that's such a huge part of it is just sort of breaking up the permission um, <laughs> of when you can do something and how, which, you know, it's not all good, obviously, but... Um, and, and then we have new barriers like on, like, okay, well, I'm going to YouTube or Facebook. Oh, yeah those all that those new territories and new terrains but it, there's lots of yeah obviously you've explored them deeply well and the technology itself which is yeah. its own, like impossible barrier mm. uh, as as we all learn because you know it's we're always plagued by technical difficulties there's always a better program or a better piece of equipment and uh that's the frustrating part but in some ways i think the grappling with technology uh it has in some ways transformed uh, the theater I, I would have otherwise made into something that feels particularly uh, relevant now. And I don't know if I would have said that about my work prior to that. Right. Yeah. And and it's also something that is um, a lot of people are feeling is is the 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 both barrier and opening of worlds that technology has the possibility of doing and just like but still for you and katie rose to be able to really explore these deep emotional places um through through the technology as opposed to it just being like look at this funky loop pedal i've got like that's not actually the story here the story is 
deeper somehow. I mean, well, you saw our dress rehearsal, which was look at this funky loop pedal we've got. Yeah. So, <laughs> but that's often, I mean, Katie Rose, you can speak to that process because I, I think sometimes finding the toys is our way in. Mm -hmm. Totally. It, we found that that um, the way that we've started most of our most successful projects has been, I mean, the first piece that we ever made was called Corners and it's just mostly a movement piece. And, and that was just Josh being like, hey, I turned my closet into a white box. Like, what does that mean? Um, and then he was like, oh, I found out that I can turn the box. Um, and so we just made a very simple movement piece, but also I was like, Josh, how are you feeling? What is happening in your life right now? Right. Um, and so we sort of incorporated like very much what was going on, um, you know, in New York at that moment while we were making it. Um, and, and it found out that it was this piece that was like deeply, deeply emotional in a way that that I quite frankly, and Josh uses technology so much more than I do. Um, but as a movement pr practitioner, I, you, you know, I'm used to just bodies and rooms um, that I found out that these pieces could actually be like quite resonant and quite emotional, um, even though we're, you know, we work together via Zoom. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I choreograph without being able to be in a room with him. Um, but yeah, so we start with these like pieces of technology. Sometimes a piece of technology is a board. Um, right. And, and, right. and sometimes like sometimes a piece of technology is a looping pedal. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, oh, what does this mean? What story does it tell? Like how, um, how can we use it in 15 different ways? Like what's most effective? Um, and that's been fun. The ability to have like, to really explore together. Um, I feel like we probably have more of a collaboration than we ever have before because it's, you know, it's not like we go away and then come back. It's like we spend hours sort of trying to figure it out and then like calling each other and then coming back and being like, oh, I think I, let's try this. Um, yeah. So that's been really exciting. You don't have to come up with like a really good reason to work together. You can just have a, I'm, I'm bored or I, I'm lonely or, oh, I just had the smallest idea in the world and I want to share it with you. It makes the collaborations a lot more. I also, there's there's this one line um, that a teacher of mine once said is that, which is probably said often, no solo show is made alone. And um, the story is is so about this, this character of Josh in this void, tiny box alone. And that, that reads so much, but but this, the actual story of the collaboration, which I love that you brought it out in this short piece, is the relationship also that that of Katie Rose and Josh, which is a also I mean it's a disjointed friendship of of Katie Rose teaching the choreography without having another person there. But I well, think that's Katie yeah. Rose has never been in the closet, if if I'm correct. I mean, since yeah. the past five months, <laughs> never, not once. Um, we have not seen each other face to face mm -hmm. uh, in five months. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, we were talking last night, um, which is because beyond just being bored, beyond just being lonely, we've been sort of building us ourselves a, a pretty rigorous schedule. Yep. Uh, we do performances every two weeks live uh, on my YouTube channel. And, uh, and last night we were talking after our show, we usually do Thursdays, um, how the loneliest part is, you know, after the show's over and we've had, a, you know, we had a drink on over the phone together and yes. um, there you go. And, uh, and then still we have to say goodbye and we're kind of left to our own devices. And I think in some ways, we woke up this morning and we were planning to build one piece about a looping pedal. And then we just kind of sat in in that feeling from the night before and something else emerged. Mm. My, my, my trick, because we've also been, I relate to so much of what you said, because we have also embraced the sort of rigorous yeah. pattern of working in some ways, but my, and we would hang out afterwards and talk and be like, oh, that mess up, that mess up, oh, but that was great. Um, <clears throat> but my way of like commuting home or like changing is just to 
bring back the space to neutral because I've always destroyed my my oh, home. <laughs> and I wish then, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Josh is like Josh. Yeah, Josh can never quite. The thing yeah, yeah. about our rigor rigorous schedule is that Josh actually can't be like he has to strike the day after the shows, but then he's he usually probably, really probably in the middle of rehearsal for another piece that that loads that loads in the next day. Too good. <laughs> well, you guys are doing such incredible work, and um, it's gonna continue in. For, for all sorts of reasons, not just because of quarantine. I keep on saying that there are always reasons that we can't be together and that's not a good thing, but that's reality. And we we need to find out how to have meaningful collaborations and meaningful stories, which is so exciting that you're doing. Well, thanks thank for having us. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. See you soon. Thanks, Maddie. Thank you. Okay. Oaks. That's our show. So thank you for joining us and thank you for sticking through. If you have stuck through from the broken stream to the new stream, um, as you can see, it's a work in progress and we're working on it and we couldn't do it without you, um, you watching at home. Um, join us on September 18th and join us in this whole ongoing unfolding experiment to find out how we can um, keep sharing our artistic voices through social isolation. Stay safe, a flower for you. Okay, we got a lot of credits, credits here. <laughs> See you later. How's the plan?